Now let's dive into the programming of the SSR 77 A1 in this case, but it's exactly the same steps for the A2. The ETU is the same, so you can just follow along if you have the A2. Now, all the versions are programmable, except the German version, because F mark, sorry. Maybe one day we will bring out the 0.5 joule, which would be allowed to have it on full auto, and then you would be able to program it, but for now, as much as it pains me to say, wrong country. <laughs> now, when it comes to programming, it's very handy to have this card because there is the programming tree. If you don't have it, there is an overlay, or it's also gonna be linked near this video, so you can download it in digital form, or also you can probably find it on the page of the SSR 77, so there are plenty of options. Save it in your phone in case you need to do it on the field, uh, there is no internet, you know things happen, then you can do it. Important thing, we will be shooting the gun. So we need the battery inside, which I already have it inside. I also know that it's empty, but you don't know that. So we first need to make sure that it's empty. Even if you never shot it, even if it's out of the box, fresh, it can happen that the customs check it. They, they check sometimes the power output of the rifle. If it complies with the law, they need to do it with BBs. There might be a BB inside. We make sure that there is no BB inside. So remove the magazine and shoot in a safe direction to empty the chamber in case there is something. 100% safe, 100% empty. Now I'm gonna continue like this so you can actually see the trigger on the overhead camera. You keep pointing in a safe direction just in case. Okay, I'm gonna put it on fire. Now to enter programming, I'm gonna pull the trigger and I'm gonna keep holding it for 20 seconds. So keep holding it. Why is it 20 seconds? Because sometimes you just shoot one shot and then you wait. Does the player react or not? And then you shoot full auto. If you would wait for, let's say, 10 seconds, then the programming happens. Not cool, so that's why we made it 20 seconds. Now you will hear, hear beeps. One beep, two beeps, and three beeps. The first, only one beep, programs the first stage of the trigger, the semi-variant uh, of it. The two beeps programs what happens when you pull it all the way back. That would be the full auto function, unless you program it to something else or disable it. And three beeps programs pre-cocking. Pre-cocking we will do in a separate video. Now let's say we want to program binary on semi. On semi is the key thing. We will enter the one beep option. Three beeps. One beep option. Gonna pull the trigger. Now we are in the what happens on semi menu. And we can see in the tree that two beeps is binary on semi. That was two beeps. So I'm gonna wait until it cycles. One beep, two beep. There we go. Now the programming has ended, saved it. And now when I pull the trigger, it will shoot. And when I release it, it will shoot again. That's what binary does. And you see, it does exactly what we want it to do. It does binary on semi. Now let's say we want to disable a full auto function because maybe it's not allowed on the field. Maybe it's a semi only field. We will enter the programming again by pulling the trigger and waiting 20 seconds. Now we need two beeps. Two beeps. And now we need three beeps. There we go. This is how fast it can go if you know what you're doing or if you have it in front of you. Now there is no full auto. You see, I pull it all the way back, no full auto, just binary what we programmed before. So there you go. If your field doesn't allow full auto, this is how you do it. And this is the gist of programming. You can follow along the tree and program it to whatever you like. Um, the process is always the same. You just pick a different number of beeps.